Okay, in this video we're going to look at using digital logic in linear mode. Now if you have a project that's mainly made up of digital logic ICs, such as this one here, and a need arises to amplify a small analog signal, the first thing you'll think about is adding an operational amplifier. But in your design, if you have any unused digital logic gates, you can configure them in linear mode to amplify your analog signal. So in this video we're going to look at that technique. Okay, here's a very common digital inverter, and I'm using the 4000 series CMOS uh, logic. So the part number for this inverter is CD4069UBE. Now the UBE means unbuffered, so the output is unbuffered, and unbuffered logic works better in linear mode. Now the supply voltage is 8 volts, that's your VDD. Now if we input a logic 0, the input of the inverter, we'll get a logic 1 on the output. And if we feed a logic 1 into the input, we'll get a logic 0 on the output. So that's your basic inverter function. Now if we start out with 0 on the input, and 1 on the output, and we vary the voltage slowly from 0 volts towards 8 volts, when we hit 4 volts, the output will switch. So it will switch from a 1 to a 0. So switching happens, happens at VDD divided by 2, so half the supply voltage. So that's why the 4000 CMOS series has good noise immunity. To put this inverter into linear mode, we add a negative feedback resistor from the output of the inverter to the input. Now the value of this resistor can be from 1 to 10 megohms. The value really doesn't matter that much because of the high input impedance of the inverter. Now because of negative feedback, the inverter will bias itself to an output voltage of one half the supply voltage. So at the output right here, we'll have 4 volts. So now we can add a signal to the input and we'll get an amplified signal on the output. And the gain will be from 30 to about 50. Now we add this capacitor here to block any DC component that's driving uh, the inverter so it won't interfere with the bias. If we go back to our transition diagram where we saw the switching point happen at VDD divided by 2 which is half the supply voltage when we vary the input from 0 to 8 volts. Now this is textbook in real life, uh, the, trigger, the trigger transition could be lower than 4 volts or higher than 4 volts. So say if it's higher than 4 volts, the output will be biased a little bit higher, and we could get an unsymmetrical output. So we could get some clipping on our positive peaks. So to fix that, we could limit the input signal so it will not reach that upper clip point, or we could adjust the bias of our circuit. So if the output is too high, we could actually put a resistor from the input to ground, and lower it to VDD divided by 2, so we get a symmetrical output. Or, if the output is too low, we could put a resistor from VDD to the input and bring up the output voltage to VDD divided by 2. That way we'll have a symmetrical output on our amplifier. Okay, if you want to use buffered logic in linear mode, you could use this circuit here. Now with a buffered output, you have a much higher gain. So there has to be some means to control the gain of the circuit. So here you can see two resistors. There's a series resistor of 1 megohm and a feedback resistor of 10 megohm. So the gain of the circuit will be 10 megohms divided by 1 megohm. So all you have to do is pick the ratio of the two resistors for your desired gain. So next we'll look at a practical example using digital logic in linear mode. Okay, here's a project I have built using digital logic in linear mode. So what this basically is is an FSK transmitter modem used for sending data over a radio link. Now what I needed to build was a sine wave synthesizer to generate the marked space tones. Now these sine wave tones had to be accurate and clean so I decided to generate them digitally. So what I'm using here is a 4018 chip as you see in the schematic. It's a walking ring counter uh, configured to divide by 10 and pin 14 is, is a clock input and that clock input is derived from a crystal oscillator so it's very accurate. So what this counter does is generate a chunky waveform using those resistors the bank you see up there, the 35.7K and the 22.1K resistor to generate a chunky sine wave waveform. Now in order to get a pure sine wave I had to strip off the harmonics so I had to build a bandpass filter. Now the bandpass filter I used in inverter in linear mode to build an active bandpass filter to take off the harmonics to generate pure sine waves for the marked space tones. So pin 10 there is the output 
feeding a, a potentiometer which I could adjust the level of the FSK into the radio. So next we'll have a look at the scope to see some of these waveforms that are generated by the FSK generator. Okay, if we have a look at the scope, we can see the output of the divide by n ring counter, which is configured to divide by 10, and that's the CD4018 chip, and the clock input to that chip is derived by a crystal oscillator, so it's very accurate. So what we have here is a chunky synthesized waveform, a sine wave, and every 10 clock pulses will give us one period of the sine wave. So if you look at the zero crossing, every horizontal segment is a clock pulse. So we see one, two, and then on top we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, and two at the bottom, eight, nine, and then ten. We're back to the zero crossing. So every 10 clock pulses, we have one period of sine wave. Now this chunky sine wave that we see here on the scope is full of harmonics. So if we want a pure sine wave, we have to get rid of those harmonics. So what I did, I built an active bandpass filter using an inverter in linear mode to pass that signal through the bandpass filter to strip off the harmonics. So I'll bring down the output of that filter, and you can see it there, I'll superimpose it on the, the chunky waveform, and you can see it cleaned up all the harmonics, so we're left with a nice pure sine wave, which is very accurate because it's derived by a crystal oscillator. So that's how we could synthesize a sine wave using digital logic.